This is Wow What, what a week What a week Politics Politics <laughs> Welcome back to another edition of Hashtag Politrix with Botsang Mudimu Amemuilwa. Like many others involved with, in, and even on the fringes of the political space, he likes to keep track of happenings and people, especially ones closer to him. Which is why he will not claim someone else's deceased daughter for himself, unlike a certain well-known politician did the other day. Please welcome back. Someone who is expected to have his ducks and any offspring in line and a row. Our political commentator, father of 13, make some noise for Butsa <laughs> Mutimwa Mimuilwa. Oh my God. Why, why did I mention that first? You want to get me into trouble? Uh, why, are, are your kids political? Uh, no, 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 no. Maybe their mothers are political. Ah. And, and you know, the way, the way politicians like stealing. Did you say 13 children? No, man. Uh, that was off the record. Oh, okay. The way politicians how, like stealing. How many mothers? They even stay 13. To your... <laughs> Chief, I, I'm a son of a royal family. Oh, yes. Yes, and, 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 and I must leave seeds on earth. So the line must be yes. uh, guaranteed. And it, yes, we must guarantee to, to can keep Bukhosibu Ramutserong Ilua growing. Okay, it makes 100% sense. I hear politicians steal uh, uh, kids. They steal, they even steal corpses. They claim even dead bodies. No, but guys, like in his defense, uh, I can call someone my daughter that I work with, even if they're not my daughter, daughter. Oh, okay. Is that the case? It's a, it's a figure of speech that oh. uh, you treat me like the father figure in your life, therefore I'll refer to you as my daughter. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like at work, I referred to one of my uh, 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 officers yes. as my daughter. Exactly. Because I, I adopted her while she was an intern. Sure. And our relationship was not boss subordinates. Mm. It has always been, that's my daughter. Uh, absolutely. Uh, no, that's understandable. So there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, um, I think, uh, speaking of comrades, let's um, actually go to Parliament, where uh, our speaker obviously gave herself a special uh, leave. Is that even allowed, though, to go on special leave? And, uh, it, it is allowed. Special leave is in, in and I had arguments with people. Yes. Uh, uh, the labor law has made provision for what is called special leave. You, okay. can, be, you can be asked to go on special leave. It's in, in simple terms, it's suspension. Okay. Yeah, when you are on suspension, they don't say you are on suspension. They say we place you on special leave. There's, there's the terminology being used. But but she... So she suspended herself? Uh, uh, she excused herself from her normal okay. duties. Okay. And, and that's what transpired, which... Remember we spoke about it uh, last week before she went into mm. that, that process, which I think it's... it's uh, 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 I will applaud her for doing that. I think mm. it was the right decision. With such allegations uh, over her head, mm. it was a good decision because of the position she occupies to excuse herself from, from, from the duties. And fresh, I've said last week, due to her position, that it may happen, depending what the NPA decides, mm. it may happen that Parliament has to preside. Right now, we already know that the Democratic Alliance has filed for a motion of no confidence. So, so why which, would she... Which, which Brale Chesa accepted very fast. Very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Should we read anything into the fact that Brale Chesa was like, uh, you know, accepted? Well, well, Fresh, uh, uh, if I'm Brale Chesa and I've got aspirations to be the speaker, I will make sure that this one does not come back. But anyway, you know, you know why this thing is also fruitless? Mm. There is no sitting of parliament that scheduled. The, the last meeting last week, the president answering questions in parliament. It was mm. the last time the president will be answering parliament. So parliament between now and, and I want to say June, because elections are on the 29th of May, uh, parliament will not have any major significant work to do. Sure. Uh, so uh, let the speaker of parliament or madam speaker, the second lady of the nation, uh, uh, stay at home and focus on her woes and troubles and weeks and handbags. Can we discuss this thing where you are told that you are bound to be arrested for whatever thing and you want to say, I want to see the docket first? Is that even allowed <laughs> in any country? You know, Fresh, uh, when, when I saw the court papers, I followed that case out of personal interest. Because surely the law allows for us to say, Botsang, uh, you're under arrest for certain reasons. Yes. And it will come out in the wash in court. Absolutely. But, but the normal, first of all, you ask a question, is it allowed? No, it is not. 
a docket, a South African police service docket. And remember, the Hawks mm -hmm. and Special Investigation, they're part of the police services. Mm -hmm. uh, whilst you are under investigation, the docket is a confidential document because it has statements of witnesses, it has statements or reports of investigating officers. Whilst they're investigating, you cannot demand and have access to that document. Mm. Only when you are charged and, and the National Prosecuting Authority has presented the docket with other documents mm. uh, in front of the court and they are placed before the court, that, that's the terminology used, then you are allowed by the law that the court must share allegations against you or what we call the court file with you as the uh, accused person or the alleged wrongdoer, mm. not when the investigations are still, are still going ahead. So uh, we know that judgment is reserved or in, in this case it will come out on Tuesday, but I don't understand what kind of, of, of lawyers, and, and look, we are not legal experts, but some things are common cause. Mm, mm. Uh, why would lawyers go to court and demand a docket when it is unprocedural, it's unheard of? So I think Ms. Mapisa Nakula put the, 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 the cut before the horse. That's the first part. The second part is they based their uh, application. Uh, one, it was urgent. Mm. And, and they made their application on hearsay, on media reports. Okay. They were saying, the media has things about me as Mapisa Nakula from either the Hawks or the NPA or the SIO or whoever. The media has that info. So, so the, the law enforcers and the prosecuting authority has been leaking mm. information to the media. So they were demanding to say, if the media has this information, may I also have it? But I think they did it all wrong. You, you, you cannot say because somebody has done something wrong by leaking information to the media, therefore you also demand it. I don't think the judge will grant them that. But the, the National Prosecuting Authority did very well mm. in court to say, but we haven't issued any warrant of arrest. We have never informed you that we are going to arrest you. Because let me tell you, Fresh, in high-profile cases, mm. it's not like a criminal who steals cars or who do, does bank robberies. In high-profile cases, even in common persons like me and you, sure. I've been arrested before. And the cops will call me to say, somebody came to the police station to lay a complaint. Now, can you please come to the police station? Mm to come and present your side of the story. Then oh, so, so they don't turn it into a spectacle, basically? Yes, they, they don't do that. They were, look, they can, and I don't know, you remember during the, the Scorpions era with yes. those golfs it was only and short cameras? Time. It was yeah. Short time. Yeah. yeah, so, so I, I, I think she was afraid that they will turn the whole thing into spectacle and mm -hmm. she doesn't want to be embarrassed. But I don't think the NPA is that malicious that they will do that to a Speaker of Parliament. They were going to notify the same way as mm. they notified her when they had a warrant of searching her house. I don't think they just went and pounced it. Mm. If they, had, they had to go through a legal process. They had to get a court order and all that. But you know, Fresh, what is disturbing me with, with, with this whole case? It is a lawmaker, a number one lawmaker. Remember MPs, and I've said it several times, mm. member of Parliament. I don't know if they don't know or they are not aware that they are lawmakers. Absolutely. They make the law. Mm. The president signs the law into, into a, a legislation or an act of parliament. How can a number one lawmaker of the country, she's number one, an MP, mm. number two, she's a head of legislature. How can they not know the law that they're supposed to be making? And that is disturbing for me. But secondly, I don't know if politicians think they are above the law, that they should be treated. Because she lamented that the NPA and the police, they want to embarrass her. You understand? Look. She even uh, said it's apartheid all over again. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, now, this is where politics come in. <laughs> 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 now, if the Speaker of Parliament saying these laws are unjust, they are typical apartheid era laws, wow. Mm. Wow, the whole lawmaker is standing up today and saying we are still applying laws of the apartheid era in this country when she is presiding over a process mm. of those laws. And, 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 and for me, that is very, very, very disturbing. But I, I, I think, I'm, and I've said it earlier, I'm glad that she excused herself from the process. And somebody asked me a very interesting question, and for our viewers, you know, benefit as well. Uh, the motion of no confidence is not an impeachment. That's something also that I've picked up that uh, most 
uh, people and citizens, they don't understand the difference between impeachment and motion of no confidence. Mm. The motion of no confidence, it's the opposition party or whoever files it to now the deputy speaker, who's the acting speaker, to say, we don't have confidence in Madam Speaker and Mapisa mm. Nakula. Mm. Therefore, we wanted to be removed from that position. Uh, you know, we are left with what? Uh, they are left with exactly one month today so. in, in office, or maybe two, two months, okay? That does not remove her from uh, being a member of parliament. It doesn't. If, if that motion succeeds, she'll be removed from being a speaker, but she'll remain the ANC deployee and member of parliament. Mm. And if she is impeached, it's another process, because uh, uh, the speaker of parliament has also extended benefits after retirement. Sure, uh, sure. Like maybe like I'm better at the moment, she's enjoying some benefits because she's mm. retired. Mm. They, they've got like judges, like president, they've got extended benefits beyond call of duty. So she can't be removed as a member of parliament? No, 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 she can't be removed. Look, that, that will have to be an impeachment process or, or the ruling party or mm. the deploying party, which is the ruling party in this instance, by recalling her to say, we don't want you to be an MP anymore, we are replacing you. Which is unlikely. Very much unlikely. The ANC does not do that. They will always defend their members. Mm. And I don't know if the Democratic Alliance will succeed in this motion of no confidence. Mm. Because remember, it will need the majority votes. I know almost all political parties Mm. Uh, opposition parties uh, uh, are saying she must leave all of them. Mm. There's not even one uh, except obviously the ruling party that she belongs to. But they're in majority over 220 seats in parliament. Exactly. And, and you know the ANC process of saying uh, uh, you can't vote against the party line. Mm. I want to see in this instance if any of the ANC members will vote with their conscience yes. or, or will just throw the party line in this instance. Mm. But it's a wait and see situation and, and, and dwelling into the, the nuts of the case. Uh, you know, this is very interesting, uh, uh, Fresh, the case, the, the real case itself, the content of the case. Uh, somebody asked, why are they listing the wig? We call it wig or weave, this is fake hair. Or the wig, yes. yes. The wig. And, and somebody was like, but why, why wig is not expensive? Maybe she got it as a gift, but that's not the issue. Mm. The issue is not the wig sure. and the handbags. Mm. In the affidavit and the statement of the whistleblower, mm. and this is very critical, she said to the police, when you go and search there mm. to verify my statements or sure. to support my allegations that I gave her cash, she was very smart, Mapisa Nakula. She only took cash, mm. only. But in order to support them. But isn't that how it's meant to be done? Men, brush, how can cry? No, 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 no. What I'm saying though is. You know, which politician with assault would accept some sort of paper trail on some deposit here? Yeah, look, she was smart to do that, but she did two. Uh, now I must apply my criminal mind. She did two poops. Sure. She had a she had a cell phone, mm -hmm. and she used her cell phone to make that communication. Sure. And she did it either from the parliament precinct or her home. Okay. You understand? So that one is selling her out because mm -hmm. she could have got some Pakistani fake phone. I'm not advising a people. A burner phone. A burner and communicate with it. She did not. So you're saying she made him a burner. <laughs> yeah, uh, she, yeah, she became a Mabena for some moment. Elementary uh, problem. Uh, exactly. Yes. <clears throat> but the week, I want to go back to the week story. The week is critical piece of material evidence because the alleger said, when you go there to search, you will find this bag of this color, and this is the bag she collected, the 200,000, one of them. Mm. And in wherever you find those things, you will also find a week of this color, a shape or make. Mm. You know, now that information becomes very critical for the investigator because it is material evidence that this, but I don't say the alleger will succeed. Look, sure. it's, it's a very complex case. Yeah, <coughs> but it's, it's your word against mine. It's, it's your word, yeah. yeah. So that's why all these pieces of information, when you say to people, I was with Bozan when we robbed the bank yesterday, and we robbed the bank, or I gave a part of the proceeds, go and check in the boot of his car. Mm. There's a blue bag. Mm. And inside the bag, there's a Nokia phone, as an example. And I said, so, so this kind of pieces of information are very important for investigation. Mm. Mm. But uh, uh, I think politically fresh, this is very dirty and very clumsy for the country. And it is happening at a very critical stage. And, and you know, wh 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 one thing that also crossed my mind, mm. uh, Mrs. Mapisa Nakula, husband, Dr. Charles Nakula, 
was the National Security Advisor of President Ramaphosa. Mm. And, and he resigned from his duties at some stage. And, and, and somebody was asking me, but what's going on? Is, is Ntate Ramaphosa uh, unleashing measures to mm -hmm. all the people? And I said, that's how politicians work fresh. Sure. And, and, and people who undermined Cyril Ramaphosa, the politician, they are starting to see the side of him that we never imagined. Mm -hmm. If you are doing a dirty job, and remember, Mapisa Nakule has been presiding over Palapala, has been presiding over the bank statements, has been mm -hmm. presiding over many allegations against President Ramaphosa. And all of them, they never saw light mm -hmm. at the end. Now, this is how politicians work all over the world, and smart ones. Once you have used your tools of trade or of a war, you dispose them. Mm. You understand? And I think, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, President Ramaphosa has used all the important people that he needed to can sit very firm on his seat as the president of the ruling party as well as the country. Mm. And now he cannot continue to protect their interests. That is what is happening. And, and they are, you will see they are going to start falling one by one, piece by piece. And, and it starts saying to me, maybe the man was right to say, I am going to clean the ruling party. Because he's the one who said the ANC is corrupt, by the way. Mm -hmm. President Ramaphosa said ANC is the number one corrupt organization. And therefore, he's going during his term. Although he delayed, he's doing this at the last minute. Somebody may say, no, 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 but what does the president have to do with uh, uh, police work and national prosecuting work? I, I was going to say, surely, especially now going into elections, then there's almost a fine line between what's happening and a possible purge. Exactly. Exactly. And, and for me, there are also possibilities of paging. But let me tell you something very mm. interesting and that I got from a very reliable source within the African National Congress, NEC. Ms. Mapusa Nakula was not or is not on the party list to mm. parliament. She mm. declined. Mm. She had already given notice that she's retiring from politics. Mm. So she was not going to become an MP again to stand for election to the party leadership. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm saying, if a person said, I'm picking my bags and I'm leaving, why do you still pursue her? Mm. I don't say justice must not take place. I'm talking politics. In, in, in a the, political... The, the, they're not a political threat. Yes. Mm. You understand? She, she's not a political threat. She's not coming back to politics. Somebody then says to me, but maybe they are jealous that she ate alone and she ate too much. Therefore, let's deal with her before she, she, she departs. Mm. So, so those are some of you know, the, the politics they are playing. But look, the ruling party is in serious trouble. Mm. From, from inside, from outside, from the opposition, from themselves. Right now, uh, some of my sources in the ANC are saying, we don't even know who's who. We don't even trust each other. Mm. It, it, now imagine being in an organization that is troubled, that is supposed to be focusing on the challenges they are faced with, winning back the electorate and, and beating the opposition parties, and then you are not trusting each other. It's weird. I, 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 I called a comrade friend of mine. Um, but it was like last year, and he's like, no, no, no uh, please call me on WhatsApp. Uh, we don't know who's listening to our calls anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and and he told me that there's a lot of paranoia because you don't know who's listening to your calls anymore. Yes. Uh, you don't know if your phone is bugged. You don't know if uh, 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 intelligence has been abused to, to to track what you're saying, what you're doing. I was like, dude, this is the basic call. I'm just checking up on you to see how you're doing. It's I'm normal. Like, it's normal during the election, yeah. Mm. But let me also show you how mad the situation is. Did mm. you see on Tuesday the mm. IEC, uh, as required by the law, released uh, party lists? Mm. There were people who were appearing in free lists mm. of political parties. Now, that's why there is this spying, this paranoia. Because right now, the ANC is sitting in a situation where they don't know who of their members mm. or even leaders are on the MK list. Ah, yes. you understand? So mm. there's a whole mess happening politically. If you are a career politician, because some people are career politicians, mm. they've never done anything in their lives outside politics. And it's, it's a very difficult situation. It also you know, wonders, what number are you on the list? Uh, uh, if you are ANC and you are number 200, if the ANC doesn't get um, 50 plus on elections, you are likely not to get any position. Mm. So people must come and join me and you in our unemployment lines 
or starting looking for jobs. You understand? So it's rough politically. So sure. I want to advise youngsters and kids and anybody who aspire to be a politician, mm. that's not a career. Never take politics as a career. Sure. There's also a the issue of senior politicians who have failed to declare interest in parliament. Yes. Uh, care to touch on that quickly? Well, uh, uh, you know that it's required uh, by legislation that mm. MPs must declare their uh, interest, donations and monies and all those things. Mm. Senior and, and quite a number of, of them, plus minus 10 ANC senior MPs, mm. uh, including the youth league leader who has now declined to can be on the list for parliament again. They did not declare basic things fresh that are required by parliament. Then you find senior lawmakers are, are not declaring their business interests. Then you ask yourself why? Why would they fail to do that? But we must applaud the ANC mm. for not only parliament uh, mentioning them, for the ANC to come out as well. Their integrity you know, committee and their national executive committee mm. to stand up and say these members of ours have failed to, to declare their interests in parliament. We must applaud the ANC for that. You know, it, it's giving the signs of the party you know, wanting to set the record straight and cleaning up the house a little bit too late. But, but why should you be forced? You understand? You are a political office bearer. You serve the public. You were mm. voted into that MP status by the public, and and you are failing to do basics that are required for you. <coughs> pardon me. You can be what do they call <coughs> themselves? Honourable members. Mm. Understand? They, they have no honour. And that's all I can say. They have no mm. honor. I want to see if those MPs will be retained after the elections. And I also want to see what the ANC Integrity Committee is going to do with those MPs. Mm. But it's, it's unethical. It's an unethical conduct. Although the problem is the punishment for that conduct by parliamentary regulation, it's a slap on the wrist. You know, sure. say, can be a fine, they can drop your salary for a month or two. So it, it, it means nothing to them. I mean, if somebody failed to declare a donation of one million from a certain business person or a bribe, and then you drop his salary of 900,000, or oh, what is the loss? There's no loss there. You know, for sure. 900,000 per, per annum, mm. it's equivalent to plus minus 70,000 per month. So there is no actual punishment sure. uh, towards them. But I, I think it's very disturbing, very disappointing for uh, MPs of the ANC because we haven't heard of other political parties. Mm. Mm. Again, it is member of parliament of the ruling party who are conducting themselves in this unbecoming manner, and, and certainly so. But sure. They are continuing to shoot themselves on the foot. Geopolitics, United Nations Security Council. Um, I'm sure that's why the weather has been funny. The fact that America did not veto, although they chose to abstain, rather. Yeah. It almost speaks to they've read the room, finally. I, I don't think so. I don't think they read the room fresh. No, so, so, so they read the room or they voted in favor? Is that what you're saying? The, the, if they read the room, they would have voted. Let okay. me say that first. Mm. You know, abstaining, you're sitting on the fence. Abstaining mm. means nothing. But surely they know that in the abstaining, it means it can pass. It can pass, yes. So that in itself is a statement. Why do you think the Americans, and, and I know you ask the questions and I answer, but in this instance, I want to ask the question. Why do you think the Americans abstained? You are saying I they, think they knew. abstained to allow it to pass uh, uh, because uh, the veto would have then uh, um, 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 removed it off the desk, off the table. But uh, the minute we don't participate, we are allowing it to happen, and that's probably why Netanyahu recalled the two envoys that were supposed to be having a meeting in the U.S. Yeah, and yeah. that's why he was upset because in the absence of America's veto. It will go through. It will go through. Like it happened. That is a statement in itself. I, I, I think the Americans did this because they are in an election year, not mm. because they, they, they wanted that situation to, to go through or not. Mm. I think they are trying to appease their, their citizens. Okay. Uh, 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 they are going for elections, mm. and, and we know that uh, 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 the, the incumbent has been supporting Israel, like sure. America always do, mm. but we also know that uh, president, uh, uh, what is your favorite president? The crazy guy, the the, the 
uh, Trump. Trump. Yes. Trump has been saying, if I was sitting there, I was going to ask for ceasefire and war. And I said, sure. So now it's an election year thing. It's a domestic thing mm. whereby they are trying to appease their citizens to say, uh, uh, let us stay away from this problem. We've been seen as the bad boys supporting Israel. And it has gone through with 14 out of 15 votes. One. So, so. Uh, uh, but you know that the American vote being the member of the Security Council, mm. that one vote would have turned everything around if the yes. Americans have said no. But again, let me go back to what you've been saying for the whole of last year. Actually, when I saw the resolution, I thought of you mm. to say, but what's new? Mm. These people, since the 40s, when it's Ramadan, mm. when it's, it's time for a religious process, mm. they stop the, 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 the bombing and the fighting. To, to honor and observe the Ramadan period. Now, I've got a serious problem with the UN. Is the United Nations saying people can continue killing each other any day, it's okay. Mm. But when it's for religious purposes, so for me, this, this is, remember it has a time frame as well, two weeks. Mm. There must be subscribe for two weeks. I mean, I mean, fresh, we are human beings. Let us sit here and think that we have the UN, which is uh, 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 the United Nations body that is overseeing the world. They have been quiet. They never said and, and went and tried to vote that there must be ceasefire in, in Gaza. All along. Mm. They tried once after the pressure of South Africa, and it failed because of the American uh, vote. But they, how do you go as a human being, as a leader of the world, as a diplomat, and say, let's observe Ramadan, let us ceasefire so that people can pray Mm. And, and meditate and observe Ramadan. I mean, that for me, that is madness. Mm. You want people to stop killing each other. You want to silence the guns and the bombs so that people can observe Ramadan and pray. Then after Ramadan, what happens? But it's a standard thing, though. Even during the, 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 the massive world wars, on Christmas Day, some, some of the, uh, the guys in the trenches would literally exchange gifts. Yes. And then after Christmas Day, we, we go back to our trenches <laughs> and the war continues. My, my brother, I, I've, I've always said the UN is like the AU. They are toothless dogs. Mm. Uh, uh, they, I think those people there are sick. You understand? I, 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 I appreciate religion, sure. but you can't say people must stop fighting for religious purposes. Mm. And then only for that, what about... So you don't have, you don't have respect and value for life of the children of Palestine and the children of Israel, uh, you know, either way. And, and I have a serious problem with the thing to say, ceasefire because it's Ramadan. Mm, mm. Let it be ceasefire. And, and, and you may ask, will it hold? They will hold. And then after that, will, will Israel respect this UN resolution? Because this one is a binding one. I don't think they care. Have they ever cared? They don't care. About any resolution. Have they adhere to any resolution since the 60s. Not even once. They, they don't care. They that's don't why, care. That's why for me, it's almost like just an academic exercise, uh, what happened, because we're going to celebrate a ceasefire that's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Even on the day uh, of the resolution, there was another operation that happened in Rafa. Exactly. So, so, so why are we even bothering? Um, I mean, in the, the uh, as long as it comes to superpower aggression, the UN are toothless. And we've seen it time and time and time again. So I don't know why we're celebrating. There's nothing to celebrate. There's nothing to celebrate. It's not an achievement. Maybe the only achievement is the fact that uh, you got America to shh and yeah. let you vote. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. but it's not going to stop anything. There's no, it doesn't hold water. You know, it's like going to court, Fresh. If, if you don't have a case, mm. if there is nothing to benefit from a process, why embark on that process? Sure. The, the UN is like the ANC. Mm. I think the ANC SG likes the microphone and cameras. And, and releasing statements and going to court instead of running the administration of the organization. I mean, sure. look at the embarrassment this week in court. In fact, that was actually my next question that, um, you know, as we're recording this, we're still waiting for the outcome of the logo uh, dispute. The the logo court, dispute. Yeah. But um, the ANC failed to have the MKP deregistered. Uh, when it comes to we are going to register a party called the MKP. Let's talk about that battle. Look, uh, I, I, and, and, and was it a foregone conclusion that the MK were going to win this in court? I, I said last week, it will shock me that uh, the judges, because it was a full bench, that's another sure. thing, it was a full bench of the electoral court. They even had uh, professors and specialists to, to join the, the, the panel. You understand? So they were sitting with five a, a, a lawmakers then. Mm. I, I, I think it was very clear in everybody's mind that 
if you fail to adhere to prescribed rules and regulations of the court or the electoral court mm. or the IEC in this instance, and then you want the IEC to reverse its decision because you failed to act when you had an opportunity to do so. Mm. But, but also, if we dwell deeper into this, you know, courts are led by human beings. And this instance, it would have led not only to an embarrassment and questioning of the IEC credibility. It was sure. going to really impact on the credibility of the IEC. Do we want to do that at this stage, just on the eve of the elections? As a nation, we don't want to do that. But secondly, first, it is very disturbing uh, that the ruling party and its lawmakers who are MPs and its lawyers that they have employed to can approach the court or appointed did not see this obvious thing coming that you cannot want to undo the law. So it's very disturbing that the, the ruling party does not know the laws of this country. Mm -hmm. They are not aware. How, how can the ANC being the ruling party, being the majority party in parliament, the party that appoints judges, mm. the party that, that is ruling and governing the country, do not know or are not aware mm. of the electoral laws of this country. So, That's very disturbing that mm. people who are supposed to be leading us, they don't know the law. Mm. They don't know the application and the processes of the law. If the ANC leaders and, and, and look, the law firms want money. The law firms will not, they will, they, they will not tell you, don't go, you're not going to use. Apparently they do, but I know that they don't do that. When there's money, this case involves senior counsels mm. uh, who are charging an average of 45, between 45 and 75,000 per day. Yeah. So would you refuse that as a lawyer? Free money, free lunch, free publicity. And, and, and somebody says, but if you know you're going to lose, it's very bad on you. Lawyers win and lose cases. It's, mm. it's part of the mm. game. Mm. But the NC did a, a big blunder by taking this matter to court. Number one, they've made Jacob Zuma more popular, more loved, and to say he's played them. Mm. If you look at this whole thing, people may say we like MK, we like Zuma, but he played them. He's always four or five steps ahead of mm. them, and they are falling into the trap. They have given controversy is a party free a time and in fact this is the best marketing for any party but they didn't have to spend any money for any party you win in court you win in the media you win on the street they mm. are they they are beating hands down for clumsy things. they took a very clumsy case to court i would have not done that and i've said it before if i was an anc leader member i would have not done but then you ask yourself the anc has almost 80 to 90 members mm. they've got smart minds there, legal brains, they've got lawyers, and none of them stands up and say, yeah, but guys, I mean, let's leave this thing and focus mm. on campaigning. Or giving it more attention than it needs. Yeah, yeah that it needs. Mm. Now, it is actually confirming what Zuma has been saying about them. You know, mm. to say, these people, they don't know the law, they don't want to apply the law, mm. and I'm going to teach them how to apply the law. And, and what controversy has done now has actually showed ANC flames and taught them how the law is applied. Sure. Now, as we are waiting uh, on recording this set, they're probably in court again. Oh, this is another uh, interesting part. You know, they are in court on, on Tuesday for, with the, against the IEC. They are in court on Wednesday mm. to determine whether uh, the, the logo and the name uh, MK, uh, mm. can it be used? It doesn't matter. Let me tell you, if, if MK loses that case about the name, what can it do? It doesn't mean they'll be registered. Mm. They can call us spear of the nation. What will mm. the ANC do? Mm. They can call us the rumorless chava. What mm. can the ANC do? Mm. They can remove that um, conto, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, quasan man holding mm. the spear mm. and, and, and put a huge fake person mm. holding that spear, holding a knob kiri. You understand? So it, it, for me, the logo and the name does not hold much. The party is registered. Mm. It will, we know now that it will go into the elections. Sure. And, and, and I think we are battling for a sweet and, you know, a, 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 what do you call it, dessert. We are on the dessert part of politics. So at the time of recording this, obviously, we hadn't seen the outcome of the logo argument. Yes, yes. The head on the line, the neck on the line. Will the ANC win the logo argument in court? Based on uh, uh, previous court rulings, I've mm. mentioned COPE and UDM before, based on uh, precedence, the cases, I don't think they will win. Mm. And that's the first part. The second part is what are they claiming that it is their right? What right? Where is it recorded? Mm. They've disbanded MK. Mm. And, and I, I don't think the NC will win. I don't think so. And I think also your average voter, 
knows there's a difference. It's not like uh, someone is going to vote for this, for the MK, out of nostalgia over there. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. So it's not like you're dealing with people who are not full upstairs <coughs> and might be confused. <laughs> you know yes. what I mean? Yes. It's, it's people who know exactly what they're voting for and the difference between the two. The two. It'll be, I'm it'll, even it'll, on freeze. It would be a different story if you're worried people might confuse the and truth. therefore yeah. you be disadvantaged. But there'll be zero confusion. There, there's zero confusion. And there'll not be disadvantage. You remember the ANC once went to court to, despite COPE and, and the UDM, they did not. They also went to court. Was it uh, the AIC or something? Uh, uh, the, was it the AIC, yes, to yeah. say the name is very close mm -hmm. to ANC. They will confuse their voters. They lost. Mm. They, the ANC has the habit of losing cases. Mm. And they say, look, they said they are broke. I think they've got money. If you can spend so much money not paying salaries of your staff, not paying rent, and then those who render service to you, and you, you spend so much money, unless they get it pro bono, to go to court mm. to fight cases that will not make a significant difference in your campaign as the ruling party. Sure. Uh, I think you're wasting time. Why? Wh what will the ANC benefit? Mm. If they win in court against MK or deregistering it, will it give them more voters? Those voters who did not want to vote ANC, who wanted to vote MK, they will actually take their vote elsewhere, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere or elsewhere. So, so I don't think they are being smart in spending resources. And resources fresh is not only money. It's not only time in court. It, it's also saying the time they spend there, they could have been used to come and convince Botsang sure. to say, Botsang, give us another chance. Mm. Instead of coming to me and you and ordinary voters and going to townships and talking to the people to say, give us another chance, they're sitting in court. Mm. All the members who are in, in Mangawung or who are in the high court doing, doing and having a rally outside the court, they were supposed to be ground soldiers who were convincing people on the street. Mm. I've seen EFF, MK, UDM and other political party followers on the streets. They are walking the streets, stopping people. You know, mm -hmm. people are campaigning. Their hands on. No, 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 no. ANC people are on Twitter. They are on social media, or they are in courts. And 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 you can see that the the, the ruling party has actually run out of ideas. Mm -hmm. MK had, has taken the last ideas that the ANC have and they ran away with it. The ruling party has run out of ideas. There's no creativity mm -hmm. within the ruling party. They, no, they, 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 they can't adjust to the current events. They can't read the current situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, that nostalgia of liberation movement, we are known, we are in power, we've got the resources, has gotten too much into their heads. They think it is obvious what has been happening. I've said we are sitting with 30-year-olds today, and I said who were born in 1994, even younger, who qualified to vote. Uh, 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 my, 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 my son is, 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 is just 10, 16, mm -hmm. is going to, uh, uh, I don't know whether it's 16 or 18, to vote for the first time. And I'm convincing my kids to say, I know you never voted before. You followed your father who never voted, who has been against democracy in elections. But I think for your own good, you must go and vote. I will not tell them. I wish they can follow me, but I will not tell them what to do. The ANC is not doing that mm -hmm. as a ruling party. You understand? So, so uh, uh, I think even their youngsters, bright new ideas are required within the African National Congress. This. Uh, we are going to revive the ANC. They should not do it only in corruption, conduct, and behavior. They should do it overall as well, mm. uh, as, as, as a leading political party. And they must forget this thing of saying, we are a former liberation movement, we had the Mandela's, and we're in the trenches, we're in Robben Island. They must forget that. That, that is no longer a, a, a meal ticket for political parties. It does not hold water. Sure. We've got upcoming groups now. Actually, as a, mm. you know, somebody argued with me if Hemen Mashaba is going to make it. I said, Hemen Mashaba for me is not a politician. But look at how actually SA is making inroads. Sure. They are talking sense. Mm. They are actually eating where ANC was supposed to be playing. So the ruling party is failing itself, sadly so. And sadly, we are out of time. Oh, yeah, that was quick. Um, yes, sir. Um, where do we get a hold of you online if we want to support you, disagree with you, engage with you on some of these issues? Hey, we get a lot of disagreements these days. <laughs> which, is, which is not a bad thing at all. No, it's actually good. You remember I used to say, uh, I don't like when everybody agrees with us. Sure. You see, the show is good, good point, guys. People are questioning some of the decisions. The point uh, is to spark debate. Exactly. 
and and we'll still continue at Butang M on social media handles sure. and and for bookings and and book sales zero eight two four eight five nine one zero zero on 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 WhatsApp as well sure. and Butang M at Gmail dot com fresh that's where our followers and viewers can reach us. Great stuff, and we are done with another episode of hashtag Politrix with Butang Muilo coming to you from Amp Studios downtown Josie. We're part of the Africa Podcast Network. Shout out Trevor and his team at uh, Pezul Works for the cinematography. Otis the Flow Fraser for all of the imaging. Our guest, Butsang Mudimuame Muilwa. Creative producer, Kuvesh Mohan. And show producer, Kelezo Mudisa King. Email us at waw.africapodcastnetwork.com. If you're in Shanghai, China, I will see you tonight. Cannot wait. Ni hao, dogs. We'll see you again next week. Till then, have a great week in spite of yourselves. Right.